Okay, in the Chumash, ran um, page 66, in Lach Lecha. Okay, what we're learning last time is what's called the Bisman Absalom. After these words, Hashem said to him, Don't worry, Avram, you didn't use up any of your merits. Your merits are plentiful. And so he, Avram Avinu says to him, Yeah, but it was going to go everything to my Damascus uh, slave, uh, uh, Eliezer. I mean, come on. So he says, No, Hashem took him outside. And he said, count the stars that you're going to be, sets the way your children are going to be. So it says in the Pasik, he took him outside and he told him, Habet no Hashemaima. Now, Habet, we said last week, is looking from up to down. Meaning, Hashem actually took Eliyahu and put him on top of the sky. And he said, look down at the sky. And that's how many of your children are going to be. The commentaries explain, by the way, it doesn't mean in quantity the amount of stars. Because Hashem already told me you're going to be like the dirt of the ground. It means the quality of stars. Shining, bright, and so on and so forth. Okay, so we started mentioning last week, and so we're going to continue this week. What? That's good. Bug off. So we said last week that this week we're going to talk a little bit about the story of the constellations, the mazel. Do we have mazel? Is there no mazel? What does it mean when the Gemara says, Ein mazel Yisro? What is this whole concept of mazel? So before we explain in a practical sense, first of all, first in many opinions, like Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar says, Collectively, there's no mazel for a Jew. Individually, Jews have mazel. Some opinions say, no, no Jew has mazel. And again, we're going to explain exactly what these things mean. So let's, let's go off a little bit and discuss a very fundamental thing in Yiddishkeit. Okay? A Jew is not allowed to believe in idol worshiping. It's a given. First of the Ten Commandments. I am God, your God who took you out of Egypt. You should not have any other gods. One of the seven Noahic laws is a guy is also not allowed to worship idols. Now, when the Torah says a guy is not allowed to worship idols, there's a big argument in the codifiers between the Rambam and others and between the base Shulchanoruch and the Ramah between a lot of different, Rambam and Tesis, there's a lot of different opinions. In other words, like this, a guy has to believe, not a Jew, so let's talk about the lesser level of belief in a God that a guy has to believe in. A guy has to believe that everything comes from God. He's the boss. He controls everything. He's in charge of everything. But according to some opinions, by the way, which is not necessarily the Rambam's opinion, because the Rambam says no, a guy is allowed to believe in what's called shituf, partnership. What is this concept of shituf, shutaf, partnership? The Gemara says, I'm just explaining it properly that we should understand what the difference between a Jew's belief in, in Hashem versus a guy's belief in Hashem and what a guy is allowed to believe in and what, for instance, the Rambam writes, Muslims are not idol worshippers. The Rambam writes clearly, Muslims are not idol worshippers. They believe in God. Their Muhammad is a prophet. There's no trinity, shminity, binity. They have one God and prophet. So they believe Mamash in one Hashem. Christianity, on the other hand, has something that's called a trinity. There's, you know, the three of them. Now, what does this mean? According to the Rambam, for a guy to believe in Christianity is a Vedazara. Because the Rambam holds a guy is not allowed to believe in any partnership. What does a partnership mean? 
So the explanation is like this. The Gemara says there's three partners. Gimel shoot from Ba'adam. In a person's birth, there are three partners. Father, mother, give the body. And Hashem gives the soul. So the street part, you can have a parent giving birth to a stillborn, God forbid, who gives the life of the baby, that comes from Hashem. So the parents give the body, and the God gives the soul, the life, the neshama. It's understood what's the most important of the three. God's participation, life. Otherwise, you just have a stillborn. So what's the primary uh, partner in the, in the child? Is HaKadosh Baruch Hu who gives the neshama. Yet, a person, the Gemara says, there's three partners. Why are there three partners? The definition of a partner means they have a say in the matter to do it or not to do it. The parents didn't have to get married. They didn't have to have children. They could have not had it. Why does the Torah say, amidst in the Ten Commandments, honor your father and mother? Like, who are they? God made you. What are, who's a father and a mother? The answer is, they are a partner in your existence. Why are they a partner in your creation of the child? Because they had the choice to have you or not to have you. And because of that, they are called partners. And because of that, the Torah says, you have to give them thanks, you have to honor them, you have to fear them, you have to respect them. Why? Because they have a say in your existence. Okay? Now, when an, uh, when <coughs> this is the marshal that the marriage gives and Chassidus brings down. When uh, a wood chopper chops with an axe, the axe is not a partner in the chopping. You don't say when the guy finishes chopping, you don't come along and say, oh, thank you, Axe, very much. You don't th say thank you, Axe, very much. Why not? He chopped. Or let's take it another step. You ask somebody to give you a ride. Give you a ride from your house to show. You get out of the car if you're a mensch. You say thank you to the, to the driver, right? It never enters a guy's mind to say thank you to the car. Unless if they're overwhelmed by the car. But you don't say thank you to the car. Why don't you say thank you to the car? It's very simple. The car had no opinion to bring you or not to opinion to bring you. When the ax chops the tree, the axe has no say whether he's going to chop or not. If somebody cuts you a piece of cake, you don't say thank you to the knife. You say thank you to the cutter. Why do you say thank you to the cutter? He could have cut. He could have not cut. And he chose to cut. So you're telling him thank you. Which means like this. Something which is, which has a say, something which has a say, you give credence to. Something that has no say is not a partner and therefore it's uh, foolish to give credence to the car or to the knife or to the axe or, or to the pen that wrote down something for you and said, okay, thank you, pen. Okay? That's very clear, right? Now, according to Aloha, a Jew or according to all opinions, is not allowed to believe that any power that exists in the world has a power of their own. Not the sun, not the moon, not the constellations, not the mazel, not the angels in charge of the nations. Nothing, according to a Jewish halacha, a Jew has to believe there is only God and God only. Even Not even people. You don't worship people. But that's not in sustaining the sustenance of the sun and the moon. And 
they used to worship the sun and the moon and the constellations because the constellations, the mazel, should have a good mazel. Oh, he had good mazel. Luck. Mazel, they say, is, a, is an acronym for Mokim, Zman, and Loshin. Time, place, and your tongue. <laughs> mazel basically means constellations, luck. You have you Mazel Tov. What does Mazel Tov mean? Mazel Tov means you be good luck. So some, you say somebody had good Mazel, right? They won the lottery, they had good Mazel, right? Now, does that mean that we give credence to the Mazel for you winning the lottery? 100% not. A Jew has to believe that nothing in the world but God is the power of the world. Everything else, the sun, the moon, the stars, the constellations, everything else is only like the axe and the hand of the chopper. There's no credence given to the axe because the axe has no say of its own. You don't say thank you to the axe. You don't say thank you to the car. You don't say thank you to the knife. That's a given according to Allah for every single Jew. What? Your parents who had a suicide, suicide, they all can be explored, but before that they say, oh, wow, I have to No. So is that, is that really worshiping God in a way? No. What is that? Craziness. The question is when the, the suicide bombers of the Arabs say, uh, they say, what are they going to get? Uh, 72 girls from Virginia that they promised. So uh, that is it's a Baba Mice. Now, huh? What's the shit? A Jew has to believe there is nothing but God, period. Everything else, that doesn't mean we don't get heat and warmth from the sun, or we don't get heat or from the moon, and it doesn't mean the sun doesn't produce produce, the Grashi says, and the moon doesn't produce produce, and it doesn't mean the constellations don't make it rain or, or that, but a Jew's belief is there is no credence given to any of that, because they're only the axe in God's hand, the chapel. One second. Now, the question is, is a non-Jew allowed to believe in Shita for not? Is a non-Jew who says like this, I believe in God. I believe in God. No question. But I believe the sun, the moon, the constellations have their own ability like the parent have their own ability to have. Everybody says a child comes from God. So why are the parents partners? The Gemara calls them the three partners. Because they have a choice to have you or not to have you. Right? It's I their choice. They don't have a choice. Okay. The pearl, they do. I mean. That's because we're all messed up. But the fact is, factually, they have a choice to have you or not to have you. Now, the question, how far does it go with a, go with a guy? So going to the Rambam, going to the Rambam, by the way, a guy is not allowed to believe that any of those powers have any power whatsoever. They have no power whatsoever. Other opinions, Taisis, Rosh, Dramal, Shukhnarach, they hold that, according to Halacha, a guy is allowed to believe in Shittuf. That means a guy is allowed to believe that the constellations, the angels, the, the stars, and the, the sun, and the moon, they do have their, an ability to make a decision to do it or not to do it. And therefore, for them, it's not called idol worshiping. So, for instance, in Christianity, where you have the three of them, so if you hold of Shittuf, then that's Mamashavay Dazara because then you're having two other guys besides God. 
This mamash idol worshiping. If you hold that shittuf is not forbidden, then it's not it's not a vedazora for a guy. And Allah, by the way, is it's not a vedazora for a guy. For Jew, it's hundred percent a vedazora. Okay. That's because of the impurity of the church. We don't want to walk into um, something that can affect us spiritually. You know, years ago, besides the fact years ago in Europe, the church made a lot of programs against the Jews. Not only did they not go into a church, if the church had an awning, even today, from guys, if there's a church awning, they won't walk under it. They'll walk around it, or they'll go to the next block. A lot of guys won't even walk under a movie theater awning for the same reason. It's, it's impure. They don't want to be affected by it. And by the way, the sin of walking into the church is only a place where they actually worship, which then, for a Jew, is of a desire. For them, it's not, because they're allowed to worship in its Christianity. But for a Jew, that church is of a desire. In other words, halacha gliri, lesser, not saying you should do it. But there's a less of a problem of a Jew walking into the, uh, to a mo mosque than there would be to walk, according to the most opinions, than to walk into a church. I'm not saying you should go into either of them. But there's less effect on the neshama by this. Now, now you have this whole union of mazel by the Jew. So we say a Jew should have good mazel. Say mazel tov, should have good mazel. Hashem said, your mazel of Avram is not going to have a baby. And your mazel of Avraham, I'm changing your mazel, is going to have a baby. Or God forbid, in Yiddishkeit, right? Somebody is deathly ill. What do we do? We add a name. Chayim, Rafal, Chaya. We add a name, okay, usually which means life. In the prayer that we say, I mean, you don't have to say the prayer, but in the prayer that which is said, when they change to somebody's name, they say the, the prayer says the following. If it was decreed on this person that he should, God forbid, die, this is a different person. Because this is not Avram anymore. Now he's Chaim Avram. So it's a new person. He has a new name. So he's not Avram. If Avram was decreed to die, now he's Chaim Avram. They usually give a name which means life. And therefore the decree shouldn't affect him. So this is the concept of a Mazel. Now, taking it a step further when it comes to Jews, by the way, a Jew, even <laughs> when there is a concept of Mazel, even when there is a concept of Mazel, that's why we say mazel tov, should have good mazel. We don't, a Jew is not bound by mazel. You know, one of the main mazel constellation things is the, star, the old fashioned astrology. Or today, astrology, right? The stargazers. There's a famous story in the Gemara with Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva was once told by a stargazer that your daughter is going to die on her wedding day. That's what a stargazer told Rabbi Akiva, your daughter is going to die on the, on the wedding day. Rabbi Akiva kept it in the back of his mind and he forgot about it. Many years later, his daughter got married. She got married, very nice. The morning after the wedding, all of a sudden Rabbi Akiva hears a big yell in the house. What happened? His daughter took off her long pin that they had in the hair, they used to wear these long pins, and she stuck it into the wall, and when she pulled it out, there was a vicious snake dead at the other end of it. So this brought Rabbi Kiva to think, oh, come to think of it, the guy told me she is gonna die, so there was something there. So Rabbi Kiva said to her, what is the story in the Gemara? Rabbi Kiva said to her, what did you do yesterday, special? She said, I got married. She said, no, no, no. What special did you do? So she told him that during the dinner, everybody was busy in the festivities, 
a poor man came knocking on the back door. I was in the kitchen. I opened him up and he told me he hasn't eaten for days. So I sat him down and gave him a meal. I fed him. So Bikiva said, now I understand what the Pasuk says. Tzedakah tatzel mimavas. Tzedakah saves from death. There was another story in the Gemara, which is a similar story, but very interesting. I think it was Rabbi Kiva or another few people were sitting together with a stargazer. And there were a bunch of workers walking into the forest in the morning to go work. So the stargazer says to Rabbi Kiva, you see that guy? He's not coming back alive. He's dying in the forest. So, okay, Rabbi Kiva waited around. At the end of the day, the guy came back. The guy came back. So the stargazer was shocked. So finally they saw that there was Taka's poisonous snake in his bag. He almost got killed, and he didn't. So Rabbi Kiva said to him, what did you do? So he said, I'll tell you what I did today. Normally, everybody brings their own lunch. Then we collect the lunches. And then when lunchtime comes, we give them out again. I saw one guy forgot to bring his lunch. See, he's going to be embarrassed. So I said to the guys, you know what? Let me collect the lunches today. When I came to him, I took my lunch and I put it down for him. So Bikiv again says, Sraka Tatsu Mimav, is he did that act of goodness? Now, what does that mean? Was the guy supposed to die? Or wasn't he supposed to die? Obviously, there's something there. I mean, Bikiva's daughter had this poisonous snake, and this guy had his poisonous snake. What happened? that changed the destiny, the mazel of that particular, pe of those particular people. So sages explain that Jews are not bound, even when they have mazel. Like we said, Rabbeinu Bechai says, he brings it down over here, that although Israel as collective community is above planetary influence, there is a mazel for each person as an individual. Okay, every person individually has a mazel. But it goes even more. In Sfarim and Chassidus, definitely it explains that a Jew could change his mazel. A guy can't. By a guy, what the mazel is supposed to be, that's what's going to happen. He can't change it. By a Jew, a Jew has the ability that even if the mazel said negative, not good mazel, good mazel, you don't change. Even if there was negative mazel, the Jew has the ability to change it. How and why? Because a Jew is not bound by limitations of mazel. Well, if a Jew dies, you could change his mazel. If you buy a lottery ticket, you could also change your mazel. <laughs> Yeah, because a Jew comes from a higher level of godliness than the constellations do. Constellations come from the world of Bria, whatever the Kabbalistic world are. The Jews come from a higher level. What level is that? The Gemara's expression is always, Ein Mazel Yisrael, meaning Jews don't have Mazel. Whether it's collective, individual, Jews are not bound by Mazel. So Chassidus, it explains, don't read it, Ein Mazel Yisrael. Ein Mazel Yisrael means there is no Mazel. Read it, Ayin Mazel Yisrael. The level of Ayin, of nothing, that's the source of the, that's the Mazel of the Jew. Don't read it, there is no Mazel by a Jew. Read it, Ayin, the level of Ayin, I'll explain to you what level that means, is the mazel of the Jew. What does this mean? We say in Davening, Shabbos, in Shira Malis, it says like this, Shira Malis, Esa, Einai, I pick up my eyes to the mountain, Governor Malach says, 
May Ayin Yavay Ezri. It's a question. From where will my help come? Where will my help come from? Ezri, and the, and the next passage says, Ezri Me'im Hashem, my help comes from Me'im uh, Hashem uh, from Hashem who created heaven and earth. So simple, learning the Pasik, it's question and answer. Dara Malach says, I pick up my eyes to the sky, where do I get help from? And the answer is, from heaven, from God. In Hasidus it says, it's not a question and answer, it's a statement. I pick up my, my eyes to the mountain, may ayin, from the level of nothingness, Yavai Ezri, my help will come. What does it mean? There's a passage Shlema Malak says, Ha Chachma Ma'ayin Timotse. Chachma is comes from nothing. That's what Shlema Malak says. Chachma Ma'ayin Timotse. Chachma comes from nothing. What does it mean, Chachma comes from nothing? So, explanations like this. You know, in the worlds, there's four worlds. Each world has ten levels, Chachma, Bina, Das, Chaz, you know, if you learn Siddhis, Kabbalah, whatever. The level higher than world, higher than world, is called the level of nothing. Meaning, world is the finite revelation of God. Chachma, meaning higher than the level of world, is the infinite revelation of God is the infinite revelation of God why is a Jew not affected by Mazel why could a Jew change Mazel for one reason a Jew is not bound by nature naturally the stars say you're going to die today you're going to die on your wedding day that's what nature says that's what the astrology is Nature of the stars is saying you're going to die. But that's only if you're limited and bound and, and in fact affected by, by, by nature. If you're above nature, how in the world is that going to affect you? It can't affect you. You're above it. Bottom line, bottom line of all this, a Jew has mazel, but he's not affected by it. He could change it in an unlimited way without even knowing about it. Because the neshama of a Jew comes from the level of ayin, which is even higher than the world, the infinite level of God, not from the finite worldly level of God, from the infinite level of God. And if it's the infinite level of God, it can control nature completely. Does that, does that change whether a Jew keeps the Israel of sin? This has nothing to do with free will. Your mazel is your mazel has nothing to do with free will. Mazel is what's going to happen to you. Free will is when you're going to observe mitzvahs or not observe mitzvahs. That's totally up to us. Yeah. Tzedakah, praying, learning, davening, amuna, trust and faith in God. We could change it. Why? Why? Because our soul is not limited in the nature of the mazel that says this is the way it naturally is supposed to be. A Jew is not bound by that. The Jew can reach a level above the nature, and therefore, if you're above nature, you could change nature. Yeah. What? I mean, I've seen many books written about the Kabbalah, they say that, that, that each month has a mazal, the Jewish month has a mazal. Gemara says that. The Jewish month has a mazal, so... That's what the, the question is, in, in the Gemara it says, every month has a mazal. Yeah, like uh, Elul's mazal dogim, and I mean others mazal dogim, and this is a uh, mazel this, mazel uh, the various different, a lion, the very, the, the Gemara says, there's 12 mazolas. Each month has a mazel. But again, is the Jew restricted and limited by it? No, they're not. 
they could change it. How? You have to work to change it because you have to tap in to a level of above normal, above nature. You have to tap into the infinite. And then when that is there, there's nothing that you, you, you're you not limited by that anymore. That's what Hashem is telling Avram Avinu, coming back to the Chumash. Hashem is telling Avram Avinu, you're telling me you're not going to have kids. The stargazers, Avram said to God, the stargazers told me I'm not having kids. He said, what did they tell you? Avram's not having kids. But you're not Avram anymore. We're changing you to Avraham. And that name is going to produce kids. Because your mazel is being changed. If somebody is Shlomazel, should he change his name? If his last name is Shlomazel? <laughs> I think it would be a good idea to change it. So me, <laughs> What's the difference between a Shlomil and a Shlomazel? Shlomil, if, if I'm sitting next to you and I pour boiling hot water over you, so I'm the Shalomil. I'm the one that did it. You're the Shalomazel. You don't got mazel. <laughs> and the nudnik says what kind of water? <laughs> and what? And the nudnik says what kind of water? Is yeah. Okay. So now, just a few minutes left. Let's go. Huh? What? First of all, you know, let me tell you something. When people say, oh, those people have it so good, their mazel is good, this and that, do we really know what's going on there? No. no. Okay. So we can't come along and say a statement, oh, their mazel is great. Right? They might say, you know what, I have very bad mazel, in fact. And you have better mazel than me. We have to look into our own pots instead of uh, other people's pots. The pot is always greener or cooking no better on the other side. A person could have a lot of money and a big house and a beautiful car and a beautiful everything and they are miserable. And you'll never know it. The Rebbe once spoke about Howard Hughes. Right? Remember Howard Hughes? Okay. Howard Hughes in the last years of his life became a hermit. He didn't go out of his house. He didn't let anybody cook his food because he was afraid they're going to poison him for his money. They didn't let anybody, huh? He was a germaphobe. What have they called? That too. That too. They didn't let anybody cut his hair because he would kill him. He didn't let anybody cut his nails. And the Rebbe said, the guy had all the money in the world. What does that make him? Nothing. It makes him miserable. There's a Hasidic expression. Three things affect you. The Chas Not from the Rebbe, it's a Hasidic, the Hasidim expression. It says three things affect you. If you have them and you're not affected, it's only because you don't have enough. Feel like this. Money makes you crazy. That's a fact. If you have money and you're not crazy, it's because you don't have enough. Get enough will make you crazy. Whiskey, mashka, makes you drunk. You have mashka and you're not drunk, it's only because you didn't have enough. And chassidists, they say refine a person. A person learns chassidists. And they're not refined just because they didn't learn enough. Okay. Are there people in the world that yes, they're content and they're happy and that I'm sure there are. Okay? 
But we, as other people, can't look at somebody else and say, oh, look at the mazel those people have. You know that statistically, any, all the goyim that won the lotteries, the big ones, curse the day they won it. They curse the day they won the lottery. Why? Until then they had a normal life. What happened afterwards? They got divorced. They got this. Nobody looked at them. They, they, they were worthless. They were only interested in the money. And people didn't want them. Okay, that's a life. The Mishnah says, wealth is if you're happy, content with what you have. Because then you find meaning in life. Now, you ask me a question. Are there goyim, or Jews for that matter, that have... <laughs> contentment and they have a lot of gashmis and they don't have godliness in them you know they've got there might be but you know what they're still missing out a lot of life meaning what is life for them question is what is life you know my father used to say in Hebrew chayim life in Hebrew is chayim right Chaim, you know that? You heard that before? Chaim. What are the two middle letters of Chaim? Yud Yud, which is Hashem's name. The two middle letters of Chaim in Torah is God's name. In English, it's called life. What are the two middle letters of life? If. Life without Torah is very iffy. If, if, I have, I don't have. You know, it's a very iffy. So, some people cannot show it, some people will show it. The bottom line is, the ultimate, Hashem should bless everybody with an abundance of money, and abundance of everything, and meaning and spirituality in life. That's what, by the way, you know what that's called? Coming a Mashiach. <laughs> that's what it's called, becoming a Mashiach. Money. Life. What is the second one? I don't know. I speak to a lot of people that say when I give them a brach of a living long, they say, I talk to you, so I'm not interested. <laughs> but let me ask you a question. Did any wealthy person, any wealthy person on his deathbed, Ever regret that he didn't make more money in life? Never. What does he regret? He regrets that he didn't spend more time with the family. He didn't leave him a, live a more meaningful life. He didn't live uh, the way a person, should, a human being should live. Because, <laughs> because a Jew has spirituality, then the money is good, the happiness is good, the physical is good, then everything is blessed because then it's mixed together in total harmony and total beauty. And if it's mixed together in total harmony and total beauty, so then you have the ultimate level. But a Jew is not, again, coming back to this point, a Jew is not bound by mazel. A Jew could change mazel. Because a Jew is essentially higher than Mazel. A guy, by the way, cannot change Mazel. What your Mazel is, is what you're going to get. So when somebody is sick and you say you should buy. What? When somebody is sick. Yeah. Do it during the week also, yeah. Is that changing the Mazel of the person? No, we're just having Tashem to make him healthy. Usually when you add a name, that's when we're, that's when we're trying to change his mazel. That's when we're trying to change the mazel by adding a name. It's a new, it's a new entity. It's a new entity, so of course. But a guy doesn't convert. A guy was always a shtickle convert already. A real guy doesn't convert. Where? By a sick person? Rarely, 
I know the hocus pocus uh, guys in Israel charge a lot of money and change names. We don't do that. The Rebbe was against changing names. The Rebbe said, why are you changing names? It was a name giving you prophecy by your parents. You can add a name. That also changes the mazel. Because if you named Avram, and then you become Chaim Avram, or Rafal Avram, whatever, so you have a new mazel. What do you have to change it for? There was one person I know, he's a very big uh, mashpia in, in Kfar Chabad. When he became, he was a convert from Australia. But he's real, a uh, heavy duty uh, mashpia, knows a lot of learning. Uh, he's a very special man. When he became a convert, he accepted a name when he became Jewish. I didn't know what it was. He went into the Rebbe the first time for Yechidus. The Rebbe said to him, you should change your name to Shneir Zalman. The Rebbe told him to change your name to Shneir Zalman. Now he's called Shneir Zalman. That original name he took. But that's rare. That's rare that you... Okay, we'll leave it here.